Hey guys, Adam with The Wilderness Disciple here. So it's been about a week since I got back from my 2021 backcountry uh, black bear hunt in Idaho. And I thought I'd do a bag dump and kind of go over the gear that I took, um, any sustains or improvements that I might make, um, but just go over my gear in, in general and see what I took and what worked and what didn't. So without further ado, let's get into this. The clothes that I ended up wearing, uh, I wore um, on my hike up there, uh, was was pretty simple, pretty minimal. I wore a pair of minus 33 merino wool boxers, uh, super comfortable. Um, you know, they didn't ride, they didn't, you know, bunch up, they didn't go anywhere where they weren't supposed to go. So overall, really good pair of uh, boxers. Uh, for my shirt, I just had a pair uh, or a single asterisk, uh, kind of like a dry fit type shirt, uh, really comfortable, a little bit loose, but overall, I really like this shirt, uh, did what it was supposed to do, lightweight, comfortable, really nice. For my pants, uh, I ended up going with the uh, Kuyu Attack Pant. Uh, this is probably one of my favorite pants, it's really nice, it's got the, the side zip to allow ventilation to go through there to uh, cool you off. Um, so overall, really impressed with these pants, um, really liked them. Uh, socks, I ended up wearing a pair of smart wool lightweight hiker socks. Um, they were, uh, they worked perfect. Um, you know, I didn't get any blisters or hot spots or anything like that. Kept my feet uh, nice and comfy, wicked away the moisture. Uh, overall great pair of socks and then just a standard ball cap. Uh, I think this is the pro I've had this for about seven years. Uh, it's stained. It's dirty. It's been with me for a long time So I uh, just wore that up there. Then I wore my uh, Bino harness uh, with my range finder. I'll get in that later um, So I wore that and then I used my trekking poles uh, to kind of propel myself up the mountain for the bag, I chose the Mystery Ranch Beartooth 80, and I feel that this is actually a really good bag. I do feel it is a bit on the heavy side for what it is. It's only 5,200 cubic inches, and it's six and a half pounds with the lid. But overall, it's a good pack. I just think it's a little bit on the heavy side. So going into the pack, um, actually, let's start over here uh, in my side pouch. I just run one side pouch um, always carry a compass uh, just uh, it's always just a good safety thing to have just so that you know your direction uh, which way is north and south etc and then i run a spare gps it's just a garmin e-trex touch 25 uh, i have a uh, on x chip inside of it um, i don't use it that much but i have used it uh, on occasion when my uh, app on my phone has gone down. And then I'll typically, uh, I'll typically mark my truck, you know, or where I'm parked at on this, along with uh, the Onyx app. Uh, on this side, I carry a uh, spare firearm. Uh, it's just a Glock uh, 23, 40 caliber Glock. Uh, never had to use it, hopefully I never do. Uh, moving into the top pouch. We've got, uh, starting out, uh, I run a uh, Penstel headlamp. Um, it's, uh, it was an inexpensive one. It only has three settings. It's minimal, uh, low, medium, and high. Uh, runs off of three AAA batteries. Uh, it's lightweight. Uh, it served me well. Uh, I really like that one. Uh, flagging tape. I always carry about 30 feet of flagging tape with me. Uh, just for marking trails, marking your location, uh, marking down to animals, um, just whatever. It's just one of those, uh, doesn't weigh anything, it's always good to have. Uh, always carry a Sharpie with me. Uh, wherever I go, I've got, uh, you know, I've got my Sharpie with me in case I need to write something down. Uh, here in Oregon, we do the, uh, we have the tagless method, um, the electronic um, app, and so, it gives, you know, you mark your day, your time, all that stuff, and then you put that on the animal, flagging tape, duct tape, you know, whatever. Uh, small climate seating pad, or sitting pad, uh, fill it up with air, weighs about an ounce and a half. Uh, I usually don't use it a whole lot, usually only when the ground is like really wet, I'll, I'll use that, um, but it just kind of hangs out in my pack. A uh, couple of things, uh, nasal spray, uh, lip balm, 
just in case you know your allergies start flaring up, you get a stuffy nose, uh, your lips get chapped, whatever, you've got that with you. Uh, carry a spare flashlight. Uh, it's just a simple coast. Runs off of a single A double battery. Uh, I really like this flashlight. It's got a double clip on it so that you can clip it into your pocket or on a strap or something, but you can also use it as a head, headlamp by hooking it onto your, uh, the brim of your ball cap. Um, it's really bright, so I'd imagine, you know, if you're, if you're quartering out an animal at midnight, that would, uh, that would come in handy. And then I've got my outdoorsman tripod mount. So moving on over to the main bag. So there are, let's see here, in the bottom, I always uh, carry a hunter's orange vest. Uh, I've had this since I was a teenager. Uh, it's always good to have around. Uh, I like to uh, drape the animal over it when I've got it on my back, um, just as an extra precaution. I've also uh, been on hillsides where other hunters were glassing and I'd pull that out to just let them know that I'm there. And then a couple of extra straps, uh, just in case I need to strap some extra stuff down. Moving into the top compartment, I got my battery bank. I uh, usually carry this with me. I don't think I've ever drained it below 70% even after a week's hunting trip. Um, it just it just keeps going. Uh, then I've got my electronics pouch. Uh, I carry all my extra batteries in here, uh, cords, and then I carry a spare headlamp. This headlamp uh, is a rechargeable headlamp. I wanted at least one headlamp that I could recharge uh, just in case, you know, everything else dies and I need to, to recharge. Moving over into the bottom pouch, this is kind of my first aid slash survival pouch, um, but I got a little first aid kit here, uh, tape, diarrhea medicine, uh, band-aids, gauze, all kinds of stuff. So uh, not an extensive kit, but it does its job. <clears throat> Let's see here, got my uh, water filtration system. I just run a Sawyer two ounce system. It's got a 16 ounce bladder. It's not the greatest for a, an extended period of time. Uh, my fingers really started hurting towards the end of the week. Um, I believe that it takes uh, five of these 16 ounce bags to fill up my Camelback. So after about a week, it really gets annoying. I think that like one of the um, Catadyne pump type systems would actually work uh, if, if you were gonna be on an expedition type hunt. Then uh, I got some uh, paracord in here. I usually carry about 50 feet with me. I'm down to about 30 feet because this last week I had to tie down my tent a little bit more than normal. But multiple uses, if you're gutting an animal or quartering out an animal by yourself, that will uh, really come in handy. Then I got about 30 feet of duct tape. You never know when something's gonna break and you gotta you know, put it back together. Uh, a couple of jars in here. I've got ibuprofen and some allergy medicine. Uh, you never know when you're going to end up with some aches and pains or, you know, you're sneezing like crazy. Uh, and then I've got Aquaphor. Uh, I actually learned this from uh, Brian Call. He had mentioned it in one of his bag dumps. I thought that was a really good idea, making sure uh, nothing's chafing where it isn't supposed to be chafing. And let's see here. Got a couple of fire starter systems. Uh, first of all, I've got, this is actually new to my, my pack. It's a rechargeable, like a plasma lighter type thing. Uh, I kind of like it. Uh, this is, my nephew made this for me. It's petroleum jelly and cotton balls. Uh, works phenomenal. Like, I mean, it really can start a fire very well. And then a ferro rod. Never not have a ferro rod in my pack. See, and I always carry a solar blanket, uh, especially on the Oregon coast during deer and elk season. You never know when the weather's gonna change. It, it can get pretty nasty over there. Um, you know, lots of rain, lots of wind, get pretty cold, pretty wet, um, that could come in handy. And then I carry a uh, set of needle nose uh, tweezers uh, just for ticks, just in case, um, you know, I end up with a tick and I need to remove it. Uh, I've got that for me. For my sleep system, I'm running a REI Magnus uh, 15 down sleeping bag. This is a pretty nice sleeping bag, uh, weighs about one pound, 12 ounces. 
Um, overall, it's a really good sleeping bag. This last week, I felt it was it was a little bit warm uh, for the environment that I was in. So I will probably be looking for a new sleeping bag, maybe like a 35, 40 degree sleeping bag for uh, next spring bear. Um, sleeping pad, I've got a Climate Insulated Static V Lite. It's 20 ounces. Uh, it is a pretty nice uh, sleeping pad. Uh, really good for side sleepers, which I am. I never really noticed a problem sleeping on my side or my back or, um, well, I don't really sleep on my front, but um, any any position, uh, this, this pad did a pretty good job. Uh, for my pillow, I've got a uh, Climate Pillow X Recon, 100% garbage. I'll get into that later, but it's a it's a pretty poor um, pretty poor pillow. Um, for my tent, I'm actually running. This was the first time I'd ever used this tent. This is the Silex um, from Seek Outside. It weighs about uh, just over a pound. I think it's like 17 ounces. Um, love this tent. Um, they say it is a one man tent, um, but you can squeeze two people in there. And I think you can, but you really gotta like that person. Um, you know, you gotta be really good friends or something, but uh, tent is great. It runs off of a trekking pole system, so two trekking poles will hold it up. I ended up cutting limbs so that I could use my trekking poles throughout the day. Um, the stakes that they provide with it are less than to be desired. Um, two of them are bent, nearly broken, so I'll be looking to upgrade those possibly with titanium ones or uh, maybe some MSR aluminum ones, but overall, tent great, stakes, uh, not so much. Uh, I ended up bringing the Seek Outside uh, medium stove. Um, I didn't actually use it, um, but it is part of my system and it's, um, you know, I burned it in and everything and it's a pretty nice stove. It does get things uh, cooking pretty good. Uh, for my clothes, uh, my rain gear, I'm just running a uh, lightweight Midway USA uh, raincoat. It's really thin. I used it all elk season last season, kept me dry, um, weighs about 10 ounces, does its job. Nothing special. Uh, same thing with the pants. I haven't used these ones. I just got them. They're a pair of Columbia. Uh, pretty nice. They actually have a pretty high zip, um, button bottoms. Uh, overall fairly comfortable don't know about their waterproofness but they're light so running those for now for my extra t-shirt I have a, a Kuyu Peloton 118 this is probably one of my favorite piece of gear uh, just because it is so lightweight um, it's comfortable I really like the cut it uh, it dries really really fast so when you're all sweaty or wet from rain or whatever it dries really fast, so that's a great piece of gear. <clears throat> All right, so for a base layer, I've got a Marina Wool Half Zip Crew Neck. Um, it's a Terramar. Uh, it's pretty soft, pretty comfortable. I got it on sale at Sierra Trading Post. Um, overall, I got my deer in it last year. Uh, it's not too hot, it's not too cold. You can wear it in any type of weather. Uh, I wouldn't use it in like extreme hot, but it's it's pretty good. Got a uh, 32 degree long sleeve black, just a base total you know next to skin base layer. Uh, overall, it, it's it does its job. It's it was cheap and expensive at uh, Costco. I think I got two of them for like fifteen dollars. Yeah. Uh, up next is my um, what is this? This is the Peloton 200 hoodie. Uh, this thing is super warm. It is really nice. Um, I actually didn't wear it at all on my trip. And overall, I love this. This will be a great uh, cold weather gear. And then the last base layer is the uh, Kuyu Guide Vest. Um, I really like this vest. I think it's well known that Kuyu's um, jackets and vests, they actually run small. So this is a large and it's cut just a little bit tight on me. It's not too bad. Um, if I'm wearing too many layers, then yeah, it, it gets pretty bulky. Um, but overall, it's a really nice piece of gear, lots of pockets, uh, pretty comfortable. 
Uh, gloves. So I actually ended up bringing two pairs of gloves. Um, I've just got, you know, again from Costco, some head gloves. Uh, they're really nice. They're thick. They're warm. Uh, they can form to your hand really, really well. Uh, these are probably some of the, my most favorite gloves I've ever had. Um, they just, they're really nice. Uh, and then I've got a pair of traditional wool gloves or the fingerless. Then they've got the Velcro where you can put this over the top of your fingers if it gets too cold. Um, I've used these in all kinds of weather and they're fantastic. Brought a minus 33 base layer, uh, full length base layer. Uh, minus 33 makes a really soft, really nice merino wool. Uh, this is the first time I ran these. I actually used these to sleep in. Super comfortable, super lightweight, um, just fantastic. Can track uh, heavyweight boot sock uh, full uh, over the calf. Uh, I really like these. These are really nice. They dried out real fast. Um, super cushiony. Uh, my feet did get warm in them, but overall, um, I really like these socks. I'm actually looking forward to November uh, when I can wear these. I think they'll be really good. Uh, Peloton 240 beanie. Uh, love these beanies. I think everybody should have one uh, that's just in there. And then a Dekine Marina Wool Neck Gaiter. Uh, this thing actually saved my bacon from uh, getting too badly sunburned on my neck. I threw this on there. It doesn't get too hot, not too cold. Uh, just a really nice piece of gear. And then Kenan Trek Gaiters. These kept uh, bottom of my pants from getting too wet on the hike in. Uh, I ended up putting these on for a short bit. Um, not too heavy. They're durable. Um, I was going over some pretty rough terrain and you know, they held up just fine. So a couple pieces of miscellaneous gear, um, just, you know, toothbrush, toothpaste. It's always nice to have a fresh mouth, um, you know, when you're out there on weeks on end. Uh, little folding saw, I think this weighs about six ounces. Uh, cut limbs down with it. Uh, I've cut deer's head off with this. Um, it's, it's just a nice, simple, Simple saw, it's a Gerber. Then uh, some baby wipes. Um, don't use toilet paper anymore. Uh, things get too messy when you're out in the field for you know a week at a time, so it's always nice to stay fresh. And then some dirty bags, some dirty water bags. I got these cheap off of Amazon. I think I got four of them for like 13 bucks. Uh, they did their job. They held up well, they didn't leak. Uh, they got mixed reviews, but I figured I'd give them a whirl, and they, honestly, they did just fine. Uh, they don't weigh anything empty, and they hold 1.3 gallons each, so 2.6 gallons uh, lasted me a couple, like, two days. Um, so, yeah, overall, good purchase. Okay, let's see here. For my cook system, I actually, this is the first time I ran this, too. I actually got a lot of new gear, uh, but this is the Jetboil Zip. Um, highly impressed with this. I don't do a lot of rendering of fat up on the mountain or cooking or any of that stuff. So I just, um, I primarily just boil water for eating and uh, cleaning up. But you know, I can fit my stove, a small fuel canister and a lighter in there. Um, holds about 12 ounces of water, 16 ounces of water, uh, just over 16 ounces of water. Um, but, uh, this little canister, I boiled water three times a day, um, at least a half a canister and I'd use it a couple times prior and it did just fine. Um, you know, I still have, yeah, still got a little bit of fuel, fuel left in there. Um, and then I brought a spare canister just in case. Um, and then I've got a Tito uh, titanium spork comes in a fancy little case. Um, it's kind of a pain to get out, but um, you know, does its job. And then for food, I've got a little bit of food in here, uh, just granola bars and stuff, but I just use an REI 30 liter uh, sack. It's got the two loops on the end, uh, makes it really convenient for hooking a carabiner up there or in there and then throwing it over a tree, uh, tree limb, keep it away from bears. Uh, but I primarily took, uh, you know, Mountain House, Peak, uh, some granola bars, honey stingers, you know, that kind of stuff. Uh, typically, uh, a day's calorie was about between 27 and 3,300 calories, depending on what I was eating that day. Um, you know, and I ate six times a day. So overall, not bad. Total weight for food was 8.91 pounds 
for six total days. All right, running optics uh, for my system. Uh, this is the first time I've ever actually, this is the first spotting scope I've ever uh, owned. Uh, I ended up taking this. I liked it, I thought it was really good. Um, it is a bit on the heavy side. You know, it's an 85 millimeter, weighs four pounds. I don't know uh, if I would take it again, uh, but you know, I was definitely able to check out to see if there was any, you know, uh, if, the, if it was actually a bear or if it was a burnt stump. So ultimately, I really like this. Um, just not sure if I take it again, you know, perhaps getting, in, you know, like a 65 millimeter, which weighs about three pounds, depending on the manufacturer. Uh, ultimately, it was nice to have, but again, don't know if I'd take it again. Uh, so for my regular binos, again, I've got some Vortex Diamondback 10 by 42s. I really like these. They were at the time the most that I could afford, so that's what I ended up getting. Uh, this next year, I will more than likely be upgrading these. I'm not sure to what yet, um, but yeah. So these are these are pretty nice, uh, and then I just keep them in a uh, Vortex Bino harness. I think it cost me like 30 bucks. Uh, super easy. It's not waterproof, but I've never had a problem with water getting in there. On one side, I keep my wind checker, and then on the other side, I've got some uh, hearing protections along with a microfiber cloth, and then it's got a little uh, zip in the back, which I normally keep my phone right there to keep it to my body, uh, especially during the winter, keep it, you know, keep it warm and everything. And then I've got a Leopold rangefinder. This is the, this is actually a pretty old one. This is the RX 850i. Um, I'd be pretty lucky to uh, range something out to 800 yards with this thing, which is, is actually okay with me because I don't take shots more than 500 yards anyway. So if it can't range it, then it's too far for me to shoot anyway, so I need to move closer. Um, let's see, I've got, uh, as I mentioned earlier, I've got the Outdoorsman. Um, it just clicks on there real quick. Um, you know, I actually really like this system. Uh, it's a little bit better than the other ones. Uh, you know, and you know, you're hooked on. You know, it's super easy. Uh, it's fast. It's it's really secure. Uh, I really like it. Um, you can hook, you know, you get the, the stud for it. And I did have them on my 15s, uh, but I didn't take them on this trip. So, you know, I put them on my 10s. Um, this is the Leopold Carbon Fiber. Weighs about three pounds. It's uh, a full height one, uh, which is, is nice. But at the same time, it's still a little bit heavy. Um, I'm contemplating getting just a sitting one. Uh, but this one is pretty nice nonetheless, you know, it's got uh, You can get pretty wide legs on there if you need to it's got three different settings uh, for it um, You know, I used it all week. Um, I didn't like the Adapter plate for it a replacement adapter plate Was like 30 bucks. So I ended up picking up this plate which goes on top of it um, which was like $15 um, and then it actually came with an extra one, which I already had two anyway. So I've got one for my tripod, one for my outdoorsman mount, and then I've got one for a camera. So I can swap these out, you know, no problem. I mean, just lickety split and they're all swapped out. For my weapon systems, I've got a uh, uh, Weatherby Vanguard and a 300 Winchester Magnum. Uh, I have a Vortex Viper HS, which is actually sent back to Vortex to get some warranty work done. Uh, I didn't like the way that it was tracking, so I sent it in to have them take a look at it. Uh, on the front, I've actually got a Harris uh, bipod, 9 to 13 inches. Uh, it weighs about 12 ounces, so to me it was minimal weight for the stability that would add. In addition, I ended up picking up a muzzle brake for it which has been phenomenal. Overall, I really like this system. I really like this rifle, uh, shoots really well. Um, overall, great. Uh, for ammunition, I ended up taking 13 rounds. I'm shooting a uh, 180 grain bullet in the Federal Fusion. So I brought uh, 10 extra and then three for the magazine. Uh, for my kill kit, basically I'm running the uh, Argali High Country Pack. Um, you know, the whole thing combined weighs nine ounces. Uh, I only ended up taking three bags out of this because I knew that I'd be boning it out. 
So there was no point in taking all the bags um, and just to save a little bit of weight, I ended up just taking the, uh, the three bags. Uh, so I've got a uh, Gerber Vital uh, and I carry about, I don't know, 10 to 12 extra blades. I've never gone through that many, but it's always have better to have a little bit more. Also, I actually ended up picking up uh, these little tiny blades uh, that fit just perfect. I got them off of Amazon for like $8 and there was like a hundred of them. It's got the same contour as the uh, number 60s. It's just a little bit shorter, but I think that they'll do just fine. And so, you know, I've got blades last me forever for, you know, just a few dollars. And then for my main knife, uh, this is actually a knife that I made. Uh, and uh, it's made out of uh, ADCBR2. Um, really nice steel, really sharp, holds an edge really, really well. It ended up weighing about three or four ounces versus my buck knife, which weighed about, I think it was about nine ounces. So I decided to take a chance and use one of my own knives. Right. Uh, being that I've been back for a week now, I've had a lot of time to reflect and to kind of look back on how I packed my system, uh, you know, what I took, what I didn't take, what I could do different to actually make the hunt a little bit better, to make my trip a little bit better. So starting off, I'd actually have to say that the base layers that I took, you know, I ended up taking four base layers, uh, way too much, absolutely way too much. You know, if I would do it again, I'd get rid of the Kuyu stuff. Um, it's just, that stuff is way too warm. You know, I could sleep in my 32 degree, you know, if it was a chilly morning, I could wear my Marina wool. Uh, but ultimately it was just too much, you know, that right there is, uh, you know, about a pound and three quarter I could have saved. So that was definitely something that, you know, I could have left behind and been just fine. Uh, the other thing is, is the gloves. Um, I didn't need these, um, you know, again, way too warm. Uh, you know, they're really nice gloves. I absolutely love them. Uh, but again, just, it was way too warm. The other thing is, is the Kenentrek socks, the, the heavyweight boot socks. Uh, these ultimately proved to be a little bit too warm. You know, a lot of times my feet were really sweaty. Um, and so I wish that I would have left these at home and either brought another pair of my smart wool socks or brought the smart wool uh, midweight socks or uh, maybe my wigwam socks. I think those would have been a little bit better for the environment that I was in, being that it was, you know, late May, early June. Um, yeah, these were just a little bit too warm. I, I am super excited about November. I think these will make an excellent sock for new November. Uh, then the, the Seek Outside uh, stove. Again, late May, early June. Uh, it's just too warm. I never even set it up. So that's, that's two and a half pounds that I could have saved right there. I could have taken some extra water or some extra food. Um, but it, you know, it proved it probably one of those items that you put in the truck and then you decide at the trailhead, you know, if it's snowing at the trailhead, then yeah, you take your, your stove with you. But if there's, you know, if it's 45 degrees at, you know, five o'clock in the morning, chances are you're not going to need this. And so, you know, take it in the truck and then decide once you're, once you're at the trailhead, uh, let's go with the, the spotting scope. So. Ultimately, I think that the spotting scope is just too heavy. Um, you know, four pounds, it, it's a lot, you know. You can, you can shave a pound by getting a 65 millimeter, um, or you can get one of the, um, Maven makes a lightweight one, Kawa makes a light one, Vortex makes a light one. You know, there are, you know, I think Leopold actually makes a light one, um, you know, a 40 millimeter, you know, weighs about a pound. Uh, I think that, that would be a much better option than this, even though you really do get really clear images, I think that there are other products out there that give you the same clear image um, at you know a fraction of the weight. So ultimately, I don't think that I would take this again. I would try to get a different spotter or borrow one or something, but ultimately I think that this just proved to be a little bit too heavy for how much I actually used it. The last thing uh, that I've totally changed is the pillow. As I said earlier, this thing just sucks. It says that it's three and a half inches thick, which I, I don't think is true. I think where you put your head um, is closer to two inches, uh, which is far too low. Um, I'm currently you know, working on designing my own pillow. I've got some memory foam sitting around and you know, combined with this uh, for, an or a, for a 
height leveler and then the memory foam for actually comfort, you know, the whole system would probably end up weighing six or seven ounces. But I think that the, the comfort that you get from sleeping, you know, I woke up with a crick in my neck almost every single night, you know, because of this. And I think that if you get, you know, quality sleep at night, then your hunt is going to be better during the day. And when you're going, you know, over all types of terrains and up and down hills and everything, you want as much rest as you can possibly get. So I think it's a small price to pay uh, to have the added weight to get the height that you actually need and get the comfort that you actually need. So this will definitely, definitely be changing. Uh, a couple of things that I would definitely not change uh, is bringing the beanie. Uh, you know, there was a couple times that the wind was blowing and it was getting a little chilly and so I would throw this on. Um, I have, you know, used this as an additional hat when my main hat is soaking wet from sweat. You know, just roll up the ears. Uh, you know, if it gets a little bit chilly, you can really regulate your body temperature with a beanie. You can sleep in a beanie to stay a little bit warmer. Uh, there's just a hundred different uses for a beanie and so this is definitely something that will stay in my pack. Um, the other thing is the neck gaiter. Um, <clears throat> Yeah, my neck would have been totally toast uh, without this if I wasn't wearing this. And like I said, the weight is minimal. The uh, benefits are, you know, outstanding. So this is this has definitely earned a spot in uh, in the bottom of my pack. One of the things that I didn't mention during my uh, clothes section was the uh, the Kuyu Kenai uh, synthetic puffy. Uh, I absolutely love this jacket. I took this with me and I wore this several times. Uh, you know, I hiked up to the top of the hill all sweaty and then the wind was blowing and it got a little bit chilly and I would just throw this on and so I won't actually go on another hunt without this jacket. Um, you know, I'll just, it doesn't weigh anything. I think it weighs like 11 ounces um, and it's just, it's just a really nice overall jacket to have uh, in your system. All right, so there you guys have it. Thank you very much for uh, tuning in and watching this, uh, this version of my bag dump. Uh, if you guys have any questions at all, feel free to comment, question down below. Uh, feel free to like and subscribe, share. Uh, but yeah, hit me up if you have any questions or anything. Uh, one thing that I forgot to mention is total overall, uh, with everything that you've seen here today, minus a few things like bug spray and stuff like that, my pack ended up weighing 63 pounds. So a um, little, little bit on the heavy side, uh, not too bad, it was manageable, but ultimately I would like to cut it down. So thank you guys very much for tuning in and I'll see you in the next video.